Hey, it's Ozzy here, continuing with the XMind 8 tutorials video series. And in this module, I'm going to be talking about structures. Okay, so a structure is basically how your mind map looks. So in this example, what you're looking at here is the logic chart structure. Okay, so let me open up this module and go through each point. So the first one is how to use them. And what I'm going to do here is hold Control and N to create a new mind map. I don't want to spoil the other one. Okay, so when you open a new mind map in XMind, the default structure is the map structure. And if I start hitting the tab key and then enter and enter and enter and again and again and again, you can see how this map structure looks. Let me hit enter a couple more times and then let me do tab and enter and enter and then navigate down and tab, enter, enter, and once more. So this is what you end up with. Now this is the classic mind map. This is how big mind maps tend to look. And this is the structure that I use when I create a massive mind map. For example, when I'm mind mapping a business idea and that kind of stuff. And of course, you can start using icons or markers to spruce all this up a bit and you end up with a really nice looking mind map. Okay, so let's flip back to our modules and see what's next the organization chart. Now this is one of my favorite structures and the way that you change the entire structure of your mind map is by changing the structure at the central node. That is the central topic bubble, okay? So if I just rise that up on the screen just so that you can see it, if I right click on that, you'll see that on the pop-up menu there is an item called structure and if you hover over that, a new panel slides out and here there are a ton of different structures. So the map structure is the one that we're on at the moment. I'm going to select the organization chart. Okay. And this is what this looks like. Now, let me show you what happens when you hit tab on this one. I'm going to click on the main topic six bubble. And you'll note that when I click tab, the new subtopic branches down instead of sideways. And if I hit enter, a subtopic appears next to it. And if I hit enter again, the same thing happens. So I'm going to do tab, enter, enter, tab, enter, enter. And you can see how cool this starts to look. Now, I sometimes use this structure when I have a big task that can be broken down into many, many subtasks. So I find this structure really handy. And what I do is I'll work on the first task, then mark it as complete, work on the second one, mark it as complete. And a lot of times tasks overlap. So a lot of times I use these progress icons and that lets me know what I'm up to with any given task. Okay, let me close that and let's go back to the modules. And the next one is the tree chart. So let's head on back to this one. And here I'm going to right click the central topic. I'm going to go to structure again, and I'm going to go to the tree chart. Now, one thing I want to mention is that I'm selecting the ones that are aligned to the right. You also have a tree structure that aligns to the left and an organization structure that points up instead of down. And essentially all the structures tend to have a mirror of themselves. So you'll have a right aligned and a left aligned. Okay. So, this is the tree chart and you can see this is not super friendly because it does take up a lot of space or rather it doesn't use space as wisely as the other structures. But I'm going to show you a cool trick at the end of this tutorial to show you exactly when I use the tree structure. Okay, so let's go back to the modules. Now we have the logic chart and this is probably the structure that I use the most. So let's right click on that, go to structure and go to logic chart. Again, I'm choosing the right aligned one. And this is the one that I'm using to actually present all these modules. I find it easy to work with and yeah, it's one of my favorites. I mostly use this one, the logic chart and the organization chart. Those are really the two structures that I work with the most. And sometimes the map structure when, as I said earlier, I'm working with a huge mind map. And the cool thing is that you can start with any structure. And as you start to develop your mind map, 
then you can change structure whenever you like. Every structure is one click away. Okay, so let's go to the next one. And this is the fish bone. Okay, so let me show you what that looks like. I'm going to right click on this, go to structure and go to fish bone. I'm going to do the right handed again. Now, this is one of those structures that I haven't personally found a use for. It looks like the seating on an airplane when you're reserving your seat. And maybe you could use it for that if you were designing one of those. But other than that, I don't find this structure very appealing. So let's move on to the next. And this is the matrix. Again, this is another structure that I never use. Let's just go to structure and matrix. This is near the bottom. And you'll see here, let me actually make this a bit smaller here at the bottom right. Yeah, that's what the matrix structure looks like. If you're one of those people that likes to see everything departmentalized in its own box, then this structure could well work for you. And finally, let's go to the last piece of this module, which is combining structures. And this is the little tip that I mentioned earlier on that I like to do. So let me go here to a structure that I like, for example, the organization chart. Okay. And here's the thing, you can apply a structure, not just to the central topic, which will of course change the entire structure of your whole mind map, but you can also apply a structure to individual nodes, which is really, really cool. So what I'm going to do here is on main topic six, this node here, I'm going to right click and I'm going to select the tree chart to the right. And you can see what's just happened there. Let me just do the same here. I'm going to go to structure and select the tree chart. And you can see how this now begins to save a lot of space. I've actually selected the left aligned tree chart for this topic and the right aligned tree chart for that topic. Okay. Now let me just go to this subtopic here and change the structure yet again. So here I'm going to go for a organization chart again. So you can see here that from main topic six, we have a tree structure, which affects these three subtopics. And then on the third subtopic, we have applied a organization chart, which is why these topics are branching out underneath. Now let's just right click on that and go to structure and let's apply a tree chart to the left. Okay, so this is when I find the tree structure to be handy. It can save space when applied to individual nodes in a different structure, and it can just make it look a little bit nicer. Now you can experiment with this and apply all kinds of different structures to different nodes and come up with something very unique. Okay, so that's going to wrap it up for this module. And in the next module, I'm going to cover some tips and tricks that you can do in XMind. So let's jump over to that one.